This is my house. And my good friend named Satra lives close by, about two kilometers away. So I call him up and say, hey, you want to come over? And he says, yeah, of course, I'll live right now. And so he gets on his bike and starts riding towards my house. But guess what? He doesn't stop at my place. You see, Satra loves ice cream. And so he decides to first visit an ice cream shop, which is about eight kilometers away from my house. And he doesn't tell me about this. And so this entire journey of 10 kilometer takes him about one hour. So he reaches the ice cream shop after one hour, gets his ice cream, and then starts riding back towards my place. And this takes him another one hour. So he reaches my place after two hours, let's say. Two hours. Now the big question that we wanna try and answer in this video is how fast was Satra over this entire journey? Now it turns out that there are two ways to answer this question. One way is to talk about his speed. You kind of know what speed is. It's a measure of how fast somebody is moving, right? In other words, it's a measure of how much distance something is traveling in unit time. Unit time means in one hour or one second or one minute, etc. So let's go ahead and calculate his speed over the entire journey. To do that, we need to know how much distance he traveled over the entire journey. So the distance he traveled was 10 kilometers initially, and then another eight kilometers. So 10 plus eight, 18 kilometers. And how much time he took to travel that? Well, he took two hours to do that, right? Because he, he, he finished his journey at two hours. So 18 kilometers in two hours. So what is his speed? Well, to calculate speed, we need to know how much kilometers is traveling per hour, in one hour, unit time. So all we have to do is divide 18 kilometers by two hours. And that gives us nine kilometers, nine kilometers per hour. And so we'll say Satara's speed was nine kilometers per hour. But now comes a very important detail. Is he really traveling nine kilometers every hour? No, because we saw that in the first one hour, he traveled 10 kilometers. And in the next one hour, he traveled eight kilometers. So what does this mean? What does nine kilometers per hour mean? Well, this is called the average value. What does that mean? Well, notice that in the first hour, he was actually faster because he traveled 10 kilometers in one hour. And in the next stretch, he was a little slower because he only traveled eight kilometers in one hour. So over his entire journey, he was not traveling with a constant speed. He was faster initially, and then he slowed down. But now we are asked to calculate the speed over the entire two hours. Whenever we do that, notice when we divided 18 by two, we ended up assuming that he traveled equal distances every hour. And when we assume that, we call it the average value. This is a very similar to how usually marks are calculated in schools. For example, let's say you get 10 out of 10 in physics, and I get only eight marks in physics, then our average marks would be eight plus 10 divided by two, which is 18 by two, which is nine. Now notice neither of us got nine. You got a little more, I got a little less. And that's why this is called the average value because we divided our total marks equally amongst each other. In a similar manner, we divided that total distance traveled equally in two hours and as a result, this is called an average speed. So he didn't literally travel nine kilometers every hour. And so in general, to calculate average speed, notice we have to divide the distance by time. And the unit of speed is kilometers per hour. But although this is a very familiar unit, it is not a standard unit. 
And that's because the standard unit of distance is not kilometers, but meters. And the standard unit of time is seconds. And so if you look at the standard unit, which we often call SI, standard international, we say, then the standard unit of speed becomes meters per second. All right, now there's a second way to think about how fast he was. The second way is in terms of velocity. There's a small difference between velocity and speed. Velocity talks about how much his position changes in a unit time. So when we talk about velocity, you don't look at the distance, but you only keep track of his position changes. So let's take our friend's example to understand better. Where was Satra in the beginning? Well, he was over here. This was his initial position, initial location. At the end of two hours, where was he? Well, he has now reached my house, my place, at the end of two hours. So in two hours, how much did his location change? How much did his position change? Can you see it only changed by two kilometers? Now, I know that he has traveled 18 kilometers. The distance that he has traveled is, yes, 18 kilometers. But as far as his position is concerned, it has only changed by two kilometers. And velocity keeps track of how much that is changing in a unit time. So let's write that down to calculate it. So his position change, the position change, which is also called displacement by the way. The position change in short is called displacement of our friend is only two kilometers. And we must always mention direction when we talk about position changes. Because if I just say two kilometers, it doesn't tell me in which direction, where he ended up. It could mean two kilometers to the left. It could mean two kilometers upwards. Although you can't ride your bicycle upwards, it doesn't tell me. So to, to make sure that uh, we tell that he has ended up in my house, it's important to mention the direction. And in our case, the direction is two kilometers to the right. So we'll say his displacement was two kilometers to the right. And how much time did he take? Well, just like before, the total time is just two hours. And now we just have to figure out how many kilometers he's being displaced per hour. That would be the velocity. So we just have to divide it. So velocity would be two kilometers divided by two hours which is equal to one kilometer per hour. And of course, we should mention the direction because you're talking about position changes. And just like with speed, he is not literally changing his position one kilometer every hour. He's not literally doing that. That's why again, this is an average value. So we will call this the average velocity. And so in general, to calculate average velocity, we have to take displacement and divide it by time. And just like speed, the standard unit for velocity is also meters per second. So long story short, if you care about how quickly someone is covering distance, then you're thinking about speed. On the other hand, if you are like me, who's waiting for his friend, and who's wondering, why does it take two hours just to change the location by two kilometers and you're pretty mad at him? Then you're thinking about velocity because velocity only talks about how quickly your position is changing. It doesn't care about how much distance is traveled. And another big difference between the two is that velocity has direction, whereas speed has no direction. Also, I couldn't stay too mad at him because it turns out he brought some ice cream for me as well.